Okay, we're now on lesson four, session four, where we're talking about food intolerances. So we're going to be using an gluten-free flour for a lot of these recipes. So let's go through our uh, ingredients for our hummingbird cake, which is what we're going to do now. So we have our gluten-free flour. We have everything all in one bowl as well. So if you have up home weighing things, remember you can weigh everything into one bowl, so you need more time and water up. So we have our gluten-free flour, we have our caster sugar, we have a pinch of table salt gone in there, bicarbonate soda for a raisin agent, a couple of grams of our cinnamon powder gone in there as well. I've got my vegetable oil ready. I've already whisked up our two eggs ready to be mixed in and we've got our tin of crushed pineapple. And I've actually drained that from the syrup as well in the tin, all right guys? So you don't need any of that syrup. And I've got one banana that I've actually just chopped up. And of course, our beautiful vanilla essence is going to go in there as well. I just need a, a nice five mils of that. So let's get that all mixing together. Um, I'm going to use a spatula to do that. And we're just going to mix our dry, dry ingredients just before I start to add all of our wet ingredients. Now, you're going to find that using the vegetable oil in this recipe is going to give us that beautiful moisture once the cake is cooked. So it's going to be nice and spongy. That's going to give us that texture that we're after for something that's going to be sponge like, considering that we're actually using a gluten free flour. So, cinnamon works really well as well with a combination of our bananas. So, let's pop our banana in. So, it'll sift, Chef, again? All the well, you can do it. Um, there's nothing wrong with us sifting through so we get an even mix of our bicarbonate of soda. Yes, just in case there's any dodgy lumps or anything in there, yeah. it's always good to sieve it. Always. Let's put our oil, hold back on a little bit while we stir. And I've got my mould ready as well, so you're all going to be given a, a nice easy mould to use today, which can automatically go onto our tray and into our oven. I'm pre-heating the oven today on 160 degrees, so again, don't be putting it onto a high heat, you're going to end up possibly burn in the top of your banana cake, your hummingbird cake, uh, but you probably end up with the middle of it actually being raw if you're not careful. So make sure you have the right temperature today and you're not using too much of a high heat. Let's just put in our eggs are in. Eggs are in and our vanilla essence. And you're using that folding technique, not just a rough and mix. Yes. So you don't actually need to be using a mixing machine for this. It's something that can be easily done by hand. Um, any of you obviously want to use your mixer, you can. Just be a little bit careful. It's actually quite nice to have a little bit of that texture through the banana. Um, so you actually have pieces inside with the pineapple. Um, you will find if you do it on a mixer, you will lose that texture. So it's quite nice to have those pieces. So there's nothing wrong with us just doing it by hand. And as you can see, that gluten-free flour works really well. Just make sure you get all the bits at the bottom as well, and then you're folding it in. Put the last of our vegetable oil. There we go. Everything is now in there. This will be a perfect recipe to fit in our mould as well. So you're only going to need one. Great. Again, it's just one, like one movement, isn't it? It's do your mise en place. Have your workflow sorted and it just goes into one bowl. That's right. It's pretty much done. Great recipe to have up your sleeve as well if you ever need a dietary requirement with a gluten free element to it. Great for afternoon tea, morning tea. You could probably even go as far as maybe even using this as a bit of a breakfast item as well. I'd probably serve it with some nice uh, butter, spread it over the top once it's cooled down and sliced. So the dietary doesn't have to be hard, does it? What I've noticed in these sessions is, got your meat on plus done. Um, chefs often think that it seems to be something difficult, but what I'm seeing is, it actually isn't that difficult. It's just going through, uh, making sure you've got the right uh, dietary requirement and then doing that one movement with your workflow. I think if you've actually got decent recipes to be following for dietary, it's quite good to have the you know, a, a recipe book already, or a diary if you haven't already got one, to actually have these kind of recipes available, because you never know in the industry when we need to actually have a dietary recipe for someone that is gluten-free. So 
let's pop that in our oven. Let's preheat it at 160 degrees. There we go. And we're after that being a nice long colour. Now, if you have a little bamboo skewer at home, you can possibly put that in your box as well. You can just poke the centre, and if it's still already a little bit of that stickiness, obviously it's not actually cooked yet. So we need to make sure that it is. We can also use a knife to pop in and just make sure that it's cooked all the way through. This is now our hummingbird cake just come out the other. So like you say, it's got that nice crispy golden brown edge there and there's nothing wrong with you letting that cool down and then slicing it up. It's taken about, about, around about 50 minutes to cook, but obviously you guys need to check as you go when you're actually cooking yours, just to make sure that it's actually cooked in the middle. All right, so enjoy.